Welcome to this uh, policy briefing. Uh, this is the first uh, event for this year that the, the European Foundation for Democracy is organizing uh, with, uh, with a partner from uh, um, the United Arab Emirates, uh, uh, Trends. Um, he was represented here by uh, Dr. Ahmed Al Hamli. Um, it's a very interesting partnership because it shows how the topics we're discussing are so relevant, not just for Europe and Europeans, but also from the, the Arab world. Maybe it was about time that organizations like uh, EFD and Trends started working closely together, looking at the driving elements of radicalization processes. While there is still uh, uh, many questions around uh, uh, the phenomenon of radicalization, experts, the policy community, governments have all been trying to uh, define and understand uh, radicalization. What is, uh, what is uh, systematically emerging is that uh, um, social dimensions, social economic dimensions are actually not the root causes of, uh, of the phenomenon. Ideology is actually one of the driving factors of uh, the phenomenon. I thank you, uh, Roberta, for making this happen, you and your team. You did a lot of effort in this, and I'm very pleased with our cooperation and our partnership. As Daesh is legitimizing their action and, and, and making reference to Islamic text or the Quranic text and Hadith, to win the Muslim support across Muslim world, Muslim Brotherhood is trying to make reference to the democratic system, to win support from the Europeans to help them for their political cause. As a Muslim, I feel that I've, my religion has been hijacked by these Islamists and some European countries who are giving them the space to function, they are helping them. They do this very well. They'll start off with a Quranic statement then they'll have an authoritative hadith. Then they'll throw something else in the middle. You must all be loyal to this declared caliphate, which is not in either one. Then they'll have a hadith statement, and then they'll end up with a Quranic statement. They are actually politicizing religion to uh, gain support from Muslims to further their political cause. Then it provides a justification. And we've already heard it said that, yeah, forget the state law. We have God's law. And that is more important. We hear from military commanders working in Afghanistan and Iraq saying, we're not taking religion seriously enough out here, guys. And that is our biggest failure. We have enough guns and bombs to defeat them, but we're never going to defeat them unless we deal with the ideological aspects. If you go back to some of the earliest um, ideologues of the Muslim Brotherhood, their first target was Islamic states, saying these guys were worse than the West. But we are not talking here about the right to believe or the freedom to practice your religion. We are talking about uh, uh, an ideology that divides our society, an ideology that uh, further intolerance. Now, ideologies are about sources of legitimate authority, are about worldviews, are about conceptions of where do we want to be, how do we want to live our lives. It's not just kids joining on a bandwagon saying, oh, that's a good idea, I'll join them like they're following a sports team or something. There's a lot of nasty stuff going on in the world, which I think would justify people saying, you know, U.S. policy across the region of the Middle East has not been a good thing. And that's a legitimate grievance. Bring that with a certain type of mindset, and you can actually create some very dangerous potentials. Well, how exactly should we go about this? Is there, is there something good coming from so-called non-violent Islamist ideology that can help in fighting the violence. If uh, um, non-violent neo-Nazi groups have an acceptable ideology, would we empower them? Would we work with them uh, to either de-radicalize or teach or, or, uh, or work with young people just because they're not advocating for violence? I, I think we know the answer in Europe and the same category, the same approach is applicable to so-called non-violent, maybe today non-violent uh, Islamist groups. Isn't it our own weakness that we don't know what we want, that these people g gain influence? Our politicians, are they the right people to, 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 to sell another message, to explain the other message? But I would say there's also 
a lack of understanding, a lot of knowledge, a lack of uh, uh, not knowing what Islam is. A key element of evidence that a lot of people point to are that these kids know nothing of the Quran, they know nothing of the Islamic faith, and then from there we assume religion's not an important factor. But that's not the point, and I think policymakers and academics in this area, everybody, is misunderstanding the role religion plays. We bring our own ideologies and our own mindsets to questioning other people. Uh, some groups do not represent a uh, Muslim view about Islam. They just present their own version of under, and understanding of political ideology that they want to link with Islam. And in that respect, even though the religion is being politicized by extremist organizations, religion is still an inherent part of the individual that allows for pressure to be applied, that allows for motivating factors to be brought into the game, that makes the religious ideological perspective extremely important in understanding radicalization.